It's Friday, and you know what that means. I'm answering your questions. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. So just a quick thing about me because you know you might be a newbie to the channel and you don't know who I am so as I said at the top I'm Stacy Gotsoulias I've been hosting Locked On Yankees since 2018 I'm a lifelong Yankee fan whose father was born and raised in the Bronx and there's no way I'd be anything other than a Yankee fan Gus would have disowned me so here we are Thursday was an off day and it was quiet around Yankee land so today's episode is all about fan mail Friday and I will be answering your questions but before we get to it hit that subscribe button, hit the like button on the video, hit the bell so you know when our videos come out, and uh, join the Locked On Yankees family. It's fun. So if you aren't a newbie, you know the drill. The insiders go first, and our first insider is tried and true Betty with the question, do you think Ian Hamilton could end up in the starting rotation if needed? Could he go at least four innings, or would he be better as a closer? I like Hamilton better in the bullpen. I do. I like him better in the bullpen. Um, because he could be a long man out of the bullpen, like three innings. Or he can come in and pitch the seventh, pitch the eighth, pitch the ninth. I don't know if I like the idea of him becoming a starter. I like him as a bullpen arm. I mean, we'll see how things go in the starting rotation, though. Um, but I think, don't hold me this, but I think that if the Yankees need starting pitching, they will try to get it in a different way and not Ian Hamilton. And I know they did it with Michael King last season. Michael King is now a starter for the Padres. But I think Ian Hamilton, I would say 80-20 sure that he would remain in the bullpen. Again, don't hold me to that, but we'll see. Uh, thank you for the question, as always, Betty. Next up, Kike. Hey, Stace, my question is, what is your favorite Yankee uniform or your favorite uniform design for the Yankees all time? And in general, what is your favorite uniform of all time? Hmm. Also, what about a locked on insider fantasy league? Thanks. I am not that great at fantasy baseball. Um, I will do you know, prize picks from time to time. Uh, but I do not do fantasy leagues because I'm the type of person who forgets about them about three weeks in. I just, yeah, one year I did it. I did an auto draft because the year before I got so annoyed that the players I wanted were all taken. I did an auto draft. I ended up with like seven Yankees, including Brett Gardner and CC Sabathia. I forgot about the league three weeks in. And I still came in second to last. So someone actually did worse than me. So, <laughs> yeah. As for my favorite uniform design for the Yankees and in general, you guys are going to be shocked when I tell you what my favorite uniform of all time is. I can't even believe I'm going to say it either. Although it's not really the front. It's more the back of the uniform. But let's get to my favorite Yankee uniform. I've said it before, but I really loved the throwback uniform from 1912 that they wore at Fenway, the road uniform. I thought that was so cool. And I kind of wish that they would do throwbacks like that. Because, I mean, the Yankee uniform is basically look the same. I mean, it's slightly altered and the fit is different. You know, they're not as billowy as they were 100 years ago, but I don't know. And then my favorite uniform of all time, I cannot believe I'm saying this. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the regular home whites of the of the Red Sox. Red's my favorite color, so I don't really like the red socks across the front, but I love the back with the number and no name. I know, I know, pitchforks, everything coming after me, torches, I know, I know, I can't believe it either. Okay, I feel dirty now that I said that, but thank you for the question, Kike. Uh, from David, another insider, what would be your all-time Yankees pitching rotation? Mine is Clemens, Whitey Ford, Garrett Cole, Gidry, CeCe, Sabathia. 
That's a good choice. Now, here's my question. Is it Clemens from the days of, you know, being a Red Sox? Because that Clemens was better than the Yankees. Not that he was bad when he was a Yankee, but he was a lot better when he was younger. So I'm just wondering which Clemens <laughs> you mean. Oof. You know, it's kind of funny out of all of the different rotations and, you know, Clemens is the one from that dynasty part, you know? Hmm. I would agree with Guidry. Um, yeah, I would definitely choose Guidry. I would choose Whitey Ford. Oh, gosh, this is tough. Oof. Okay. Um, oh. I like Cole, I like CC, but I feel like there should be someone, you know what, just for craftiness and um, because he's a friend of mine, I'm going to put David Cohn in there. <laughs> There's my all-time pitching rotation. Uh, yeah, that's tough, but let me know below what you all think, you know, what what's your all-time Yankee pitching rotation? I actually feel like we could do a few all-time pitching rotations because there's so many guys to choose from that were pretty good with the Yankees, you know, like there's a... There's levels there. There are tiers there. I feel like you could do three all-time pitching rotation choices for the Yankees, but let me know what you think about that. Thanks again for the question, David. And our final question from Insiders for the Week from Wilfredo. Is this your first question, Wilfredo? It might be. It might be. Hi, Stacy. Would you put Giancarlo Stanton to bat ninth as a way to get started hitting again? I would. Ooh, ninth? I don't know. I don't think like, okay. I know that in the grand scheme of things, when you're looking at a lineup, you think ninth is the worst place because it's the last place, but it's really not. You know, that infamous time when Joe Torre put A-Rod sixth? <laughs> You know, like sixth, seventh is kind of the place where you put the guy who's not hitting. Because ninth, you really want someone who's going to restart the order in a way. Like a lot of times that that's what your ninth hitter is because we're not in the the era of pitchers batting ninth anymore either for the National League. So I think lineups have changed a bit. And so I know, no, I wouldn't put him at ninth, um, you know they're already putting him pretty low, but maybe seventh, <laughs> maybe seventh. I don't know. They got to do something. I spoke about it on Thursday show, but they have to get him to stop swinging at that low and away pitch because pitchers will keep throwing it. He'll keep swinging there. And his 2024 is going to look like his 2023. And we don't want that. We don't want that. So thank you for the question, Wilfredo and everyone else below. Let us know where you think and don't say bench, because I know a bunch of you will say, don't even put him in the lineup. If you have to put him in the lineup to get him to start hitting again and put him in a certain position, where would you put him? I know you guys, we have a relationship here. You know, I've been hosting the show for a long time, and there are a bunch of you who have been around your tried and true, your everydayers, and I know how your brains work sometimes, so don't pick bench. <laughs> Before we get to segment two, which in which I will be answering more of your questions, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button on our videos, hit the bell notification so you know when our videos go up. Sometimes they premiere live and sometimes they're, you know, filmed ahead of time like this one. Also reply to the pinned comments on our videos from Monday through Friday, excuse me, Monday through Thursday, so you can be featured on Fan Mail Friday, or you can join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. The link is in the description. You'll get texts from me. You can text me questions, and we can just chat during games, which I've been doing with the insiders the past week. There's a 14-day free trial, and it's a lot of fun. So again, coming up next, answering more of your questions. Eat stress-free this spring with Factors Delicious ready-to-eat meals. 
Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add ons every week, like breakfast, on the go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up for your springtime goals. You get two minute meals. So you can heat them and eat them whenever you want. There's no prep. They're ready to heat and eat. You don't have to clean up. There's no cooking. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. And Factor has done the math. They're less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on MLB50 and use code locked on MLB50 to get 50% off. Again, that's code locked on MLB50 at factormeals.com slash locked on MLB50 to get 50% off. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Spring training is over. Baseball has officially started, so don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize pick entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entry today. This week, when the Yankees were in Arizona, I picked Zach Allen to get more than 5.5 strikeouts, and he got six. So I won that pick, but then I also picked Nestor to get more than 3.5, and he only got two. So that's how it works. As for the NBA, you can get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during the postseason. So download the app today and enter code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's code LOCKEDONMLB, all one word, all lowercase letters, and get that first deposit match up to $100. Join prize picks today. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Welcome back. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire Channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Be sure to catch the Hometown Yankees broadcast on Sirius XM. Download the Sirius XM app and search the word Yankees. You can listen to John and Susan. You can also hear me <laughs> during the commercial breaks talking about the Sirius XM app, which you can listen to us on the Sirius XM app, which is pretty cool. So here we go. More questions from our YouTubers. Val in NY, 8571. Are you concerned about the throwing errors Volpe has made in six games? We know his arm isn't the strongest, but he seems to make bad throws on relatively easy plays. Last season, too. I may be wrong, but I think he has three errors or at least two for sure. I tried to look it up online, but can't find out where I can find individual player errors. Thanks for your time, Val. I think you can look up individual player errors on baseball reference if I'm not mistaken. I think it's probably there. I probably should have looked that up before I started recording. Um, I'm not concerned. It's not that easy being shortstop and no one's going to be perfect at shortstop. I mean, you know, if he starts making a ton of errors, then yes, I'll start to get worried, but I'm not worried yet. Not yet. <laughs> but thank you for the question. I mean, yes, it's something to look out for. I'll say that. But right now, well, it's only seven games. I'm not going to worry about it. And I'm not going to worry about the fact that he might have two or three errors in that many games because, you know, a lot of balls are getting hit to him, which is good because the pitchers are inducing ground balls. But yeah, you want him to not make too many errors. But thank you for that question, Val. Next up, Stephen Tabor. 412. Love the content, Stacy. You're a Yankee dog, meant in the best possible way, of course. Wondering if you have a favorite breed. Go Yankees. Thank you for the parenthetical. I appreciate it because I have been called a dog by people and it's just not nice. Um, I'm a cat person. We have cats, but dogs, I love bulldogs. They're just so cute. 
And I know it's bad because their faces are all smushed, but they're just, I love bulldogs. They're adorable. And if I were to have a dog, I would probably have one. So thank you for your question. And thank you for calling me a dog, D-A-W-G. Appreciate it. Next question is from Mike Lino, 6916. Hey, Stacy, hope all is well. Just wanted to say I agree that the Yankees need to be more fun and allow the players to be more themselves. And I believe Soto will be the catalyst behind some changes. I would love to see the Yankees wear the Yankee doodle hat from their logo after they hit a home run like some teams celebrate in the dugout. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> That would be hilarious. And I want them to come up with something fun. You know, I enjoyed the Tonight Show, the Toe Night Show that they did with Ronald uh, Torres, uh, where they pretended to be on TV after they hit home runs. I like when Rizzo and Glaber, you know, put their arms around each other and look at the camera at the end of the dugout. I'm enjoying the dog barking. I think that's funny. That might be the thing. I think the dog barking and bouncing up and down is going to be the thing. I don't think they're going to wear something. Um, you know, I know they're a rival, but I love the Blue Jays home run jacket. That's a cool idea. Um, but I think the dog thing is going to be, I think that's what they're going to do. Uh, but thank you for that question. I appreciate it. Jays World 247. How many Yankee hats do you have? I own about 15. Go Yanks. I have 10. I have 10 um, that I own. I have giveaway hats also. Oh, no, excuse me, 11. I have the 2009 World Series hat as well over there with my bobbleheads that I have on display. I don't wear that hat anymore. Um, but I have a few giveaway hats scattered around from Yankee Stadium from our local um, independent league stadium, the New York Boulders. I have a couple of giveaway hats from them. Um, but I am I'm always looking for more hats as you guys if you're watching, you know that I like to change up my hats pretty much every day now. It's a thing. And if anyone would like to sponsor me, feel free. <laughs> I will put on your hats and talk about them if you want, because I'm not sponsored by any hat companies yet. So, you know, just in case. But thank you for your question, Jay's World. I appreciate it. Next up, a tried and true everydayer, Teacher Sama. Sup, sup, dear Stace. As I said some Family Friday ago during the offseason, we need a more reliable closing pitcher. Look, I'm turning 41 this year, and I don't want to have a heart attack with Holmes there. You mentioned on Monday's episode how Ian Hamilton was up for a hot start. What do you think about a 7-8-9 punch with Holmes, Lewisica, Hamilton, in case the latter keeps it going? And then there's also a question about Clay Holmes that I wanted to group with this from Robbie Garns, 7732. Hi, Stacy. Hope you had a great holiday. With Clay Holmes giving us fits that would make John, John Wetland proud, our ninth inning is far from a sure thing, and it's only a matter of time before we start seeing blown saves. Do you see the Yankees adding a closer at the trade deadline? And if so, who are your top picks? And more importantly, who do you think would actually be available? Thanks, and keep up the great energy. Guys, you guys are acting like Clay Holmes is the worst closer of all time when he's really not that bad. Yes, he makes us nervous. And yes, I sometimes watch the games with my fingers over my eyes. You know, and I'm not doing the, what is it? Is it the John Cena thing where you pretend that someone's not there? I'm not doing that. But you're making it seem like he's awful and he's not. He blew four saves last season. Okay. You know, <laughs> it happens. And does he make things sweaty? Yes. Like Wetland? Yes. I don't see them going out of the organization for a closer. I think that chance is gone you know, now that certain guys have signed with certain teams, you know, if they were going to go for a tried and true closer, I'm saying that phrase a lot today, aren't I? Anyway, they would have gone after Josh Hader if they really wanted a closer, you know, or a legit closer. But Holmes is a legit closer. If it doesn't work out for him, like I mentioned earlier with Ian Hamilton, and you would, um, Teacher Sama had mentioned Ian Hamilton in his question. You have guys who can take over for the closer role. There are three that I can think of right now, and two of them were mentioned there. You have Jonathan Luizaga, Ian Hamilton. You also have Caleb Ferguson. So if Holmes does get iffy, I think it would happen from within the organization. I hope that makes sense. I think it does. Coming up next, more of your questions. You guys asked a lot of questions. Thank you so much for that. And I'm going to try and preview the series, even though the Blue Jays haven't listed their pitchers yet. Because as you know, we record the night before 
and they're not listed yet. So we'll talk about Luis Heal and Clark Schmidt, who are making starts over the weekend for the Yankees. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th, so get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. I've been on Locked On Sports Today a couple of times this week. One was an interview and the other was me begging Hal Steinbrenner to sign Juan Soto to whatever he wants. <laughs> okay, a few more questions. This one from NYY Hulkamaniacs. What are the strengths and weakness of the Yankees? It's too early. It's too early. We're a week in. It's way too early to answer that question right now because we don't know. We really don't know yet. <laughs> There's six and one after seven. No one expected that. And uh, no, it's too soon. It's too soon. Let's check back. Like the end of May. We'll check back the end of May. Am I going to remember this at the end of May? Probably not. So someone remind me. Okay. But thank you for the question. You always ask questions for Fan Mail Friday and I appreciate it. Next up. Requinix 17. I hope I said that right. I don't know if I said that right. Do you think Spencer Jones could be a September call up? What's the plan for the outfield log jam whenever he is ready? Okay. I didn't think Jason Dominguez was going to be called up and he was in 2023. Spencer Jones is starting with the Somerset Patriots. That's double A. It seems it seems the only way Spencer Jones can be called up is if he just goes on a tear in double A, they um, promote him to triple A and they bring him up at the end of the year because he's doing that well, or people get injured in the Yankees outfield and he also has to move up to triple A and then maybe they have to move him up to the majors. I really think it's going to be 2025. Of course I could be wrong. Like I said, did anyone expect Jason Dominguez to be up as soon as he was? No. Um, and I don't know about the outfield logjam because uh, it just depends. Like, again, I really don't think they're going to bring him up unless they have room for him. So there's my answer to that question. <laughs> but thank you for the question. Next up, Vincent M. Durham, 1695. What interleague series are you looking forward to seeing this season? Keep up the great work. Well, thank you. I'm looking forward to that road trip that I mentioned, uh, the West Coast road trip, that they're going to be playing the Padres, the Angels, and the Giants. I'm looking forward to seeing them play the Padres and the Angels. The Padres mainly because that stadium is so nice to look at on TV. I really want to make my way out there because Petco looks like a fantastic place to watch baseball. And San Francisco also 
You know, it's fun watching the Yankees in stadiums that you don't normally see them in, or at least you used to not normally see them in. Um, so those are two that I'm really looking forward to. I think that would be, those will be fun series. Not for us staying up late and watching them, but just seeing the Yankees in those stadiums will be nice. Thank you for the question, Vincent. And our last question of the week from Martin Ober, 249. Hey, Stacy. Oh, no, excuse me. That says, hi, Stacy. I can read. Alex Verdugo is playing with a lot of enthusiasm in the early going. Do you think he's playing with a chip on his shoulders, given the negative comments made by Alex Cora after last season? Yes. Yes, he has a lot to prove. I feel like that chip on his shoulder is going to get even bigger once the Yankees face the Red Sox. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like uh, that could be a thing. It could be a thing when they play. It'll be interesting to see how he reacts to playing against them. Um, but hey, you know, if he keeps hitting home runs like he did the other day, I'm all for him playing with a chip on his shoulder. So thank you for the questions, everyone. I really appreciate it. Uh, quickly, Clark Schmidt and Luis Heal are starting for the Yankees. We don't know who's starting for the Jays. That's fine. Um, what I want from Schmidt and Heal, I want length. I want both of them to last longer than they did in their previous starts. I'd also like for Schmidt to finish his start stronger than he did last time because he was looking good there for a while and then things kind of fell apart at the end. And then one more thing before we go. I bought tickets for Monday, the Eclipse game, because I wanted to be at a baseball game during a solar eclipse. I thought it would be cool. Not that Yan the Yankee Stadium, the Yankee Stadium, hello. Not that Yankee Stadium is going to have full totality. I think it's 91.5% of the sun's going to be covered in New York City. But I bought those tickets specifically because it's the eclipse game. They're uh, giving out t-shirts and they were making it a whole thing. The game was supposed to start at 205. The totality was supposed to be at 355. So that would be the darkest part of the day until the sun goes down. And then they announced that they're making it a 605 start. So now I'm not going because it's easier for me to get to Yankee Stadium when they play an afternoon game than it is for me to get there and back from a night game. So that's annoying. My first game of 2024 is going to have to wait. Oh, well. So I guess I'll be sitting here at home watching the Eclipse instead of watching it from Yankee Stadium. So that's a bummer. Anyway, one more time before we end the week. Don't forget, join the Locked on Yankees Insiders Club. There's a link in the description below in a 14-day free trial. You get texts from me. We text during games. You can text me questions for Fan Mail Friday. And uh, leave your comments Monday through Friday or questions in the comments Monday through Friday under the pinned comment. And you can catch the hometown Yankees broadcast on Sirius XM by downloading the Sirius XM app and searching for Yankees. Next week, recapping the series against the Blue Jays, previewing the series against the Marlins and dun -da -da -da, my new co-host starts on Monday. How exciting. And we'll look at how the Miners are doing for Miners Monday. So that's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Yankees. I'm Stacey Gonsoulias. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all on Monday. Monday.